Hi guys, it's Belle here and I am coming on with the first weekly flip through of my October Daily. This is the October Daily that I'm doing the October Daily prompts in um, that have been created by Release the Crafting and Pink Oddbird. Um, I am taking part in a collaboration. You're going to be seeing a video come up very soon of my day and what I'm going to create on my page. I will leave the links to all the creators. Please go check them out, including Pink Oddbird's um, video where you can get the links to the downloads and also these fun tickets that I'm using throughout that I think were created by uh, Priscilla from Elisa Crafting. So I'll leave all the links to that. You can use the hashtag OctDay2022 to follow along with anyone on YouTube or um, Instagram. So anyway, this is my first week of doing this one. I do. I am doing another October Daily, so you'll get a flip through of that at some point. Anyway, I've got the prompts here. This year, it's a really fun idea. The idea is that every prompt is part of a story so that by the end of um, your October Daily, you will have created your very own story. I have a rough idea in mind of where my story is going, but you know what? I didn't plan it out exactly because I want it to be a surprise to me. And I know when I'm writing uh, stories and that, I don't always know exactly where it's going. So anyway, also excuse my hands. I've been working with some alcohol inks as us crafters do on another project. So let's get into it. This is my October daily. There is a video where I briefly go through my plans and show a quick flip through of this. It's pretty boring. There's, you know, it's just got plain pages in it this year, but I will leave a link to that down below as well. And I wanted the house on the front because um, the house is a major part of the prompts and the story. So this is going to be the title page. I haven't done anything here yet. I'm going to leave that little pocket where I keep my numbers. So day one, the prompt was, you receive a mysterious letter in the mail inside a copy of a will of an unknown relative, the deed to a house and a set of keys. So I wanted this to have quite a kind of muted gothic look all the way through the book. I want to use greys, blacks, um, uh, sort of tea dyed sort of vintage looks and muted greens. So that's what I want throughout the whole thing. So I got this white envelope and I just distressed it, inked it, used stamps and things. I didn't realise at the time, but my water bottle actually had some mica still left in it. So this envelope actually has a slight glitter shimmer, which I ended up loving. Use some printables in the background that look like old writing because obviously it's a deed and a will, little bat up there. I have used numbers on every page, like here I've um, stamped a number, but I want the numbers not to be dominant. I want them almost to sometimes blend into the background so they're not your main focus. Use some washi and some Tim Holtz fabric tape. Uh, used a wax seal because obviously this is the letter. I really love how this looks. So this is a printable. I think it's actually a check, but I thought it's got like buildings on it. So it could be like an old deed and I sprayed it to get all this kind of um, the ink to run kind of thing to give it this really age distressed look. I actually put the um, prompt on the back. And then inside, you can see all the colours in here as well with all the inks and things. And then inside here, I wanted to make it feel as if it had been travelling for a while and got lost in the rain. I just wrote my little letter. Just says, Belle, a few months ago, your distant relative, Dr. Rebecca Hallow, passed away. As her only living relative, you are named as the sole beneficiary of her estate. Not only does this mean you will receive any money left after everything has been attended to, but you will also receive the deed to the doctor's manor house situated in the Scottish Highlands. Within this envelope, you will find the full contents of the will, the deed to Hollow, Ma Hallow Manor and the key. Within the will, there is one other stipulation. You will only be entitled to keep everything if you are able to stay for one whole month at Hallow Manor. Be warned, Hallow Manor is a special house with a will of its own. 
even if you want to stay, it may not let you. Your sincerely, Holton Barnes and Lazenby. And I just ripped a piece of paper and then I doubled it because I really like the way, like, fold it over in a way that kind of left this. And then I've put dead because obviously the relative's dead. And I almost wanted days one and two to be a double spread. Here's a really large metal key there that I wanted to use for my stash. And this is obviously day two. The prompt for day two is following the directions in the letter, you head to the location of the house. What does it look like? So I had this beautiful vellum um, piece by um, Tim Holt. Hold on a minute. So I had to grab something I forgot about. So I got this beautiful vellum um, piece by Tim Holt. that has got this gorgeous house on it. Um, I ripped some of the edges. I wanted to make this into a pocket. I've put the prompt up there. I've used lots of different kind of writing, wallpaper. I had the key falling over onto this page. There's the number two on the tag. It says established 1876. And the reason I wanted the vellum is so this is just a little torch. I felt like I'm going to get there at night. And hopefully this picks up and works. But you can see the light picks up and it made me feel like you know when you turn up and you might have to use a torch because it's dark at night I hope that's picking up really well where you can kind of see the outline of the house better so I picked the vellum and the torch for that reason then I used one of my tea dyed index cards cut it down the side did some stitching and I said when I first received the letter telling me of my inheritance, I was disbelieving. However, I packed up my car and with the strange old key beside me, I journeyed to Hollow, Hallow Manor. Arriving by the time the sun was setting, hence the torch, I was astounded by the size of the house. Large and grand in a faded way, the house loomed forward as if inspecting me. Surrounded by gardens and trees, there was a stillness and a chill that ran down my spine. With so many windows, the house felt almost like a spider with a hundred eyes. I shook myself and tired of the long drive, I pushed open the gate and walked towards it. That just fits in there. Lots of wax as if the wax has been dripped. So that's days one and two. Day three. I really love how this page turned out. I've just realised there might be a little bit of nudity. It's like classic nudity, so hopefully it wouldn't matter, but I'll cover that up. Day three, you decide to look around the expansive grounds. What does the yard look like? What stands out? So I kind of use lots of different papers with roses and flowers on and then this spider web down here. The three's down here, nice and faded. And then I had this image of this beautiful classic statue that looked like it was in a greenhouse. It kind of had um, foliage. It's actually an old photograph um, or a replica of a photograph. And so then I just die cut lots and lots of these vines and ivy and put the quotes, a beautiful garden by the tomb, by the door of the tomb, a warning inscription. It has come to dwell among us. And then here's a little pocket here. I used a little tag and there's the prompt on the back. And I said, I walk around the garden. It's overgrown and strangely silent. I realised there is what looks like a large greenhouse, completely overgrown, all inside and out. As I push aside the foliage and walk, foliage and walk deeper, I see a beautiful marble statue there in the middle. The statue seems so lifelike and I can see an inscription on its base. A warning! What could it mean? I get the chills again and decide to go inside the house. As I look back, I swear the stone has moved, its eyes now looking straight at me so that fits into that pocket and that's what I saw this statue that seemed to move day four the fours let me move this over fours down here I've used some Tim Holtz wallpapers here um, this is from a Tim Holtz pack uh, this is just a printable I had actually left over from I think my October daily last year I used some of these books from the Tim Holtz Halloween um, I used some texture paste that I then inked and used some of the new mica on it. So again, it has a quite sh slight shimmer to it. Anyway, day four's prompt, uh, day five, no, nope, four's prompt. You work the nerve up to go inside the house. What's the first thing that you notice? So this is what I notice. 
and I've actually there's the prompt on there that's been stitched so this is a pocket so now you can see the house better and that pokes into there oh and I used uh splatters over here that pokes into there and pay and actually plays a role that one and I've just got again little Tim Holtz with a little mini paper clip and it says on the back on entering the manor I realize it has a worn opulence about it rich warm woods and colors but in need of a lot of repair all over the hallway and living room are books and scientific papers some books still open as if someone was literally just there reading them so these are the scientific books some more of the papers that tucks in and it says dark and gloomy in here an uninvited guest but who's the uninvited guest myself or someone else so I wanted to have this kind of Victorian feel to it it all kind of goes oh it all kind of goes with the story and um everything like that so day five I've got to even look for the number then the prompt is you see a portrait hanging on the wall of your relative. Tell us about them. How did they look? So this is actually a vintage photograph. And I love this because she's sitting in a chair. She's got foliage in the background. Again, foliage plays a part in my story. And a book there. I used a wooden frame that I used a really deep green, almost... Um, uh, pen ink like almost like Indian ink I thought it was black I was crafting late at night it turned out it was a deep deep green and it stained the wood beautifully and then I used gilding paste just in areas but because the ink underneath was green it's given it a greenish gold look which is beautiful and use the metal embellishment there Again, I've used some Tim Holtz wallpapers and I've ripped and tore them and the top and the bottom. I um, sanded the edges down so that it gave it, gave it again a torn edge and looked like ink. Uh, I've used actually, they're very, very faint, but I've used some of the Tim Holtz wallpaper flowers in the background. I really wanted it to have a faded look. And it actually says in the book pages underneath, she said hell no there which fits in stamped some of the wallpaper to give it a crackled effect and then used again splatter effect to give it that grunge added some stitching and I just put the uh, one of the clip it stickers oh curious woman there's the five and then there's a little tuck spot just here this is actually from a book spine and I've stitched on there books foliage science it all plays a part in my story so I want to repeat that kind of thing throughout the pages again hand dyed index card that I've cut down and inked there's the prompt on the back and it says I left the living room and headed into the large hallway there on the faded damp wallpaper was a large framed photo of a young woman she looked into the cam camera confidently with a joyous manner her arm resting on a book that looked like the ones I've been seeing everywhere. She was a young, was she a young Rebecca Hallow or another relative? I may have been imagining it, but I was sure there was also a familiarity between the por photo, the portrait and the statue from the greenhouse. So that tucks in there. Love the fact that that's kind of book page gives it more texture. So if you're guessing what direction my story might be going in, it has been inspired by a classic story. Let me know in the comments down below. Day six. Suddenly you hear a spooky sound. Describe what you think it was. So this one, I wanted it more to be focused on the sound. So, you know, there's not tons of decoration, but so I'm going to remove the tag. So I've used an old digital, it's actually a release the crafting digital from one of the first kits I worked with as her design team, which I still love. I have used two mica, the Tim Holtz mica sprays on here. Um, let me see which ones it is I've used and I'll be able to tell you. I used Burning Ember and um, Harvest uh, Iron Gate on there to give it this golden kind of shimmer. I've got a book page be um, behind, which is actually a vintage herbal book page. And it's underlined words like careful, 
necessary, recommended and individual costs. They're like underlined and smeared. Got the number six up there, some more foliage, some stitch in here with lots of threads hanging. And then this Tim Holtz foam um, skeleton, uh, skull and crossbones that I've had for years. And then it says, I heard a strange noise. Frightened, I stilled my beating heart. So this is the tag I made with a stamp. Again, I think this is a release the crafting um, tag from a kit. Got lots of bits here, books and candelabra, spider's webs, and then on the back there's the prompt. So it says, as I stood looking at the picture, I heard a strange scratching sound, almost like nails. So that's why I used, you might be able to also hear piano in the background. That's not me for effect, that's um, my neighbor. That's why I used the corrugated to give me the sound. Then came a rustling sound. Which is why I've used this over the tag. Standing, I stood still trying to calm my breathing and hear which direction the sounds were coming from. So we've got the nails or what sounds like it could be nails and then the rustling here. So it's very interactive, lots and lots of threads and um, some sort of of that eco dyed kind of fabric that pops in behind there that's a pocket. I love the book page and the greenery. Again, it's kind of leading you through the story. And then day seven. The seven came out far too bright in this one. Day seven. You take a walk into the next room and see what actually made that sound, or sounds in my case. What was it? So in this room, I've walked into a library. So again, I just printed a uh, image of a Victorian library. I used some vintage handwriting um, book page that from like a exercise book that I had. So I've put that behind. Then I used one of these Tim Holtz um, die cuts with the swags. I've obviously got one in the living room too and put that there. Uh, this has lots of books, which I loved. And then I made this kind of collage here. So again, this is vintage handwriting uh, and um, vintage kind of numerical work. Then I used some of the little Tim Holtz, what are they called? Got them right here. Uh, it just says ephemera pack. I'm sure they have an actual name. Anyway, I used some of those. And then that's my eye. So I'm looking, I'm trying to find. And there's another Tim Holtz book. So this one has the prompt on it, another piece of Tim Holtz. I'm using my Tim Holtz, guys. If you've been watching my channel, you'll know I treated myself to a lot of Tim Holtz this year. So I'm using it in my own journal um, rather than thinking stitching. And then we have these two Tim Holtz pieces again held together by a little mini paper clip. And the story continues. Once my breathing had slowed, I made my way across the corridor into the room. Opening the door, I realised it was a beautiful library, but all over the floor, books and papers had been knocked down and were fluttering in the breeze from the open window. There on the table sat a huge black raven. Hold on. Sorry, guys, that was someone at the door. So where was I? So the papers and books are strewn all over the floor and there's an open window of a breeze coming in over here. And as I said, there on the huge table sat a huge black raven could that have been what caused the mess so these kind of just go together with the tim holtz mini paper clips and they tuck behind here so you don't really see my eye or anything it's kind of goes like that which i quite like and that's day seven guys so there we have it. Dr. Rebecca Hallow has left me as the beneficiary of her will. I've turned up to her stunning manor in the Scottish Highlands and um, it's spooky. And as soon as I've gone in, I've seen um, the gardens all beautifully overgrown and everything. And then there's this greenhouse that seems to have a two minute and this statue of a warning inscription. I end up going in which may actually have moved i end up going into the manor and find out it's beautiful old 
beautiful but in desperate need of repair and has dampness and ripped wallpapers and things and everywhere I look there's just books and science papers and things lying all over the place and then I see this beautiful portrait which I think is Dr Rebecca Hallow but I would have expected you know like her the portrait's quite old so who knows is it her is it not her it might be her and then I hear this noise And I think, what's that? And I end up finding myself standing in a library with books and papers absolutely everywhere, an open window, breeze rustling everything, and a big black crow sitting on the table looking at me. So that's day seven, guys. So my prompt's actually going to be for day 10. So you'll actually see me create day 10 on camera. That will be coming on Monday. So let me know what you think down below. I really wanted it to not just be Halloween. I wanted to go more gothic this year, more Victorian gothic, not outrightly, overtly monsters and vampire, but which I love and my other journals have been. But I wanted to particular style and Tim Holtz lends itself to that. And I brought a lot, so I might as well use it rather than keeping it in the packet. Really enjoying it so far. Um... Like I said, let me know down below if you think you know which way or which story might have inspired me. It's actually one I read, reread, really recently, um, and I just thought it would be perfect um, in this. So, and let me know what you think of the pages. I've really enjoyed making them. So that's it, guys. Day one to seven. I will be back next spooky Saturday with a flip through of the next seven days in this story. And who knows what I might be encountering. So thank you so much for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, hit that thumbs up. If you've watched for the first time and aren't a subscriber but would love to subscribe because you like the way um, my crafting style is, then hit that subscribe button. It's always highly appreciated. And until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are safe. And I hope you're all having lots of spooky fun. Crafting fun, even. <laughs> Till next time, guys.